Hello and welcome everyone to the George Mason Basketball Coaches Show featuring men's head coach Tony Skin. Tonight, our first episode of the 2023-24 season and we are thrilled to be back here at the Capitol Air House in Fairfax. I'm your host, Bill Rowland. Here's tonight's rundown for you. We're going to start with head coach Tony Skin. Take a look back at a couple exhibition games that they had last week. And then later in the show, take a look at the upcoming season opener for the men. In the second segment, we'll have Coach Vanessa Blair-Lewis of the women's team joining us. We'll get a look at her squad as well this season. Also, Tony, we're going to start with you. The 12th head coach in George Mason University history for the men's basketball team. So I got to ask you, has it sunk in yet as a guy who played here at George Mason? And now when you hear that, the 12th head coach, have you had that one wow moment where you're like, oh my gosh, I'm the head coach of the George Mason men's basketball team? Yeah, I've had, I've had a couple of times where um, I believe I tweeted about it. I was coming back from, I believe we were, it was in July in Atlanta. Um, I got on a plane, kind of looked out the window. It just kind of motivated me and just kind of hit me there. And I tweeted about it like I still can't believe I'm the uh, head coach at George Mason. And as much as as excited as I am for these next couple months, I'm also um, just thinking about just trying to get year one out the way a little bit, too, as well, too. So you're just trying to get all those first, right? Yeah. First practice, first exhibition game, first regular season game. They'll come a lot of first, a lot of milestones. Obviously, we're hoping the first win comes next Monday as well. Months. And you can kind of then get it out of the way at that point. Yeah. Obviously, you guys played the, the exhibition games last week. Mm -hmm. Was there a thought of playing that with 10 new players on this team that the exhibition games where it's – obviously, they're not real games, but they're as close to as it can be mm -hmm. rather than the close scrimmages that you had? Did you feel like with 10 new players – this might be a better opportunity to see how these guys respond to each other. Did that go into the thinking at all? Yeah, that, that was one of the first things that I wanted to do. I wanted to put these guys out there. You know, a lot of times with these scrimmages, it's closed doors. You can never really focus too much on what the outcome is. Um, but just knowing I had a, a, you know, a bunch of different guys, um, I wanted to put them in that light. And having a good team like St. Thomas, who's had a lot of history, a lot of culture. They've won championships at their level. Um, they've had, I mean, they've had a couple guys that were D1 drop downs. And so I wanted to put our guys in that atmosphere and I thought that they responded. You look at that, you talk about St. Thomas and NAIA team and, and they had been very successful. Little bit of a work in progress as far as the offense goes that game. I think at one point you guys had an 18 to two run that kind of stretched the lead out a little bit, but there was starts and fits a little bit. What did you take out of game one? Yeah, I mean, th there's just not, you can't predict those type of games, especially when you have a new group, a new atmosphere. Um, those guys haven't practiced as much in the Eagle Bank Arena, and so I expected us to win. Um, but credit to St. Thomas, they were a good team, and we had a chance to really pull away. But you know, that's just a game. It's a game of runs, and I think we were up as much as 20, um, and they competed. But you know, for the most part, our guys responded. You look at uh, the interior defense in that game. You guys only gave up two field goals inside the three-point line the entire game. A lot of it has to do, again, D1, NAIA. Your mm -hmm. size was probably a little bit bigger than theirs. But you had to feel good that when guys were driving into the paint, they were getting contested shots, having to take tough shots, and not getting easy looks at the rim. Yeah, I mean, our guys, I mean, they, they go after each other um, every single day. And I think that was one of the real good things about seeing them just being able to go out there and compete against somebody else. Um, but from a defensive standpoint, you know, you're seeing the immersion of, you know, a Malik Henry. You're seeing Amari Kelly, who's a fifth year guy. But those guys really competed. And I thought defensively they took care of business and kind of gave us that separation interior wise. Did you get that feeling? You say it's you know, nice to go out against somebody else. Did you get that feeling leading up to that St. Thomas game that man, these guys need to play somebody else yeah. than the other guy that's in green or gold all day because they're just tired of going against each other yeah, in practice. Yeah, so, so apparently we've been bad refs for the last, you know, three <laughs> or four weeks. And so I, I was dying to get some competition that wasn't ourselves. We've been beating each other up. You know, one thing we have to continu continuously get better at um, is defending without fouling. Um, and I thought we did that um, against St. Thomas. I know being at a couple of the practices when you guys have gone into your five-on-five, five, your old teammate, and, and now he's your director of player personnel, and Lamar Butler, yeah. he talks all the time about how these guys don't like his whistle at yeah. all when he's refing games. And I've had to remind him, he didn't like any of the calls when he was playing when he yeah. got those whistles. So yeah. it's kind of the other side of it now. It's funny. Lamar is definitely an awful ref. <laughs> 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 Apparently. 
according to the team, yeah, anyway, according to the they, team, they, they yeah. really give it to them. So, all right, let's jump ahead. Exhibition game number two, you guys just played on Friday night. You traveled to West Virginia, Big 12 school, pretty big packed house for them. Yeah. Uh, so a good environment for you guys to kind of be like, hey, I'm not going to necessarily say it was hostile, but they definitely weren't rooting for you guys. But it was a good effort by your squad all the way through. You came up short, but it was nice to go on the road, kind of gel together as a team and play some really good competition. Yeah, I mean, that was, it was a high-level game. You know, you, you're talking about, you know, the Big 12, one of the best conferences in the country. Um, you're talking about a group that this is their first road test. And it's not in the scrimmage. It's not a closed-door scrimmage. It was in the atmosphere that I expect them to understand. That's what it's going to look like. And I thought we competed. Um, I thought we were the better team, even though down the stretch we weren't able to um, finish out some possessions on both ends of the floor. But I thought we competed and responded for sure. Now that you've had two games under your belt, what are some of the things that you've been – I know no coach is ever satisfied. I've had done enough of these to know this. But were there bright spots that you looked at and said, I didn't think we'd be this far along at this point? Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, again, when you put together a team of um, a bunch of different guys, you're trying to figure out, you know, who's who, what's what. Um, the one thing that's been really comforting for me is just knowing, and I'll continuously to say, you know, I've got a pretty good problem with my depth and having the length that I have and the versatility that I could play with multiple guys. It was really just good to see um, in a game where a couple of my guys got in foul trouble mm -hmm. um, and we just kind of adjusted rotation wise. So I'm excited about um, being able to play, you know, nine or 10 guys. Last thing real quick, Darius Maddox, 8 of 11, but you turned to us at the press table at one point and said, man, he's taking some tough shots. Yeah. You know, he's, you know, it's a new role for him. You know, you're talking about a guy that was, you know, third or fourth option um, at Virginia Tech. He's one of the best shooters that I've ever been around as a coach and as a player. Um, we have a drill called the five-minute drill where one ball, one passer, you got to make as many as you can in one spot. And, and the kid's making, you know, 74, 75, which is a lot. And now I'm trying to get him to understand if, you're, if you catch it, it's your best shot. Um, obviously, he took some really, really tough ones and it went in, but we can't live and die by that. So we're just trying to teach him um, to take some better shots. It's head coach Tony Skin will come back with women's head coach Vanessa Blair Lewis. Coach Skin will join us a little bit later on in the program. We'll preview Monmouth coming up as well, the home opener on November 6th at Eagle Bank Arena. This is the George Mason Basketball Coaches Show from the Capitol Ale House in Fairfax. <laughs> Welcome back to the George Mason Basketball Coaches Show. We'll be rejoined by head coach Tony Skid of the men's team coming up on our next segment. Right now, it's my pleasure to be joined by the women's head basketball coach at George Mason University, Vanessa Blair Lewis. Coach, thank you for coming out. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Now, your team is coming off what I would call a pretty good building block season. You finished 500 in the A-10 last year. You were over 500 overall. You won five of your last six games before taking the number one seed in the A-10 tournament in UMass right down into the fourth quarter. I think it was a three- or four-point game yep. in the fourth quarter. From where it started when you first came here to where you are now, how much of that progress? Are, are you ahead of schedule, on schedule? Where would you put it? Well, a lot more gray hairs for sure, um, but, de but definitely on pace. You know, I, I always say when we do take over and you rebuild programs, you crawl, you walk, and then you run. And so right now we're, we're, we're jogging. We're doing pretty good. You know, you go from zero wins in the conference when I took over the position to 10 in the first year to 16 in the second year. So I think we're doing a really good job of getting to that part where we're, we're, we're ready to run. One of the things that you talked about at the open practice that I was at and watched it a couple of times that I've been out there to, to talk to you and your assistants is you want to get better on offense. That's been the whole thing is you want to score more points. Now, your defense was pretty darn good last year. You guys held opponents to less than 62 points a game. Is there a trade-off? Can you still be as good defensively but score more? Or is it something that you think, hey, no, we can still be as good defensively. We just need to be better on offense. Well, I'm learning that now. Um, you're talking about a defensive coach, but I was an offensive player. Um, so I transitioned in coaching that, you know, every night your shots aren't going to always show up. So, but defense does win championships, and that is true. And so I focused most of my career on playing defense, um, so much so that we were like number two in the country behind, behind Baylor at one time. So now it's like, okay, we can't continue to play in the 50s, so we wanted to address the need of scoring. Mm -hmm. And so we really recruited some really great girls that could put the ball in the hole. And so we had two scrimmages, and it was a tale of both of those stories. Our first scrimmage, we come out to the University of Delaware, we score almost 90 points, and we played no defense. 
<laughs> it was 87 to 85. I'm like, oh my goodness. Like, this was, we didn't have to go down the other end. Um, and then this last scrimmage, we just had Norfolk State yesterday, and the ball wouldn't go in the hole, but our defense shows up, and we edge out of that 57-54. So can you have it all? We're going to try and find out, because I think the days and the games that we put both of them together, it's going to be pretty good. I think the nice thing is that you were in two close games, so at least you got an idea of how your team's going to perform down the stretch if it's close, whether it's 87-84, 57-54, right? Yes. A couple of nice ones there. Um, Well, then I'll ask you the same thing I asked asked Coach Skin earlier. You had two opportunities now to see your team play against other competition. Are there things, again, no coach is ever satisfied, are there things, though, that you saw you went, that's pretty good. Yeah, I, I think that when we address the scoring issue, um, to be able to put up almost 90 points with a team that was averaging in the low 50s, 60s last year, that was very impressive. That was very promising. But to also see them when it got tough to have that grit and gut to defensively lock in and win the game. You know, yeah, every game's not going to be a blowout. You just need one point to win in this game. And so for them to, to, to drive in and, and get that win, Um, I was very, very pleased with that performance. A lot of talk in the men's game about the transfer portal, but it's a reality in the women's game as well. And and you brought in some transfers from the portal. But I would imagine a lot of what you're trying to do starts with those returning players like Taylor Jamison, Sonia Smith, people like that. How have they done bringing in those new players to say, hey, this is how we do things? Yeah, the first year we built on the culture in the locker room. It was huge. You know, you can't win until there's a culture of a winning mentality. And so those players now are leading the charge for whoever we bring in, portal, newcomer, doesn't matter. They have to fit our, our culture, and they have to be a part of what we're trying to build here. And so those veterans, Jasmine and, and Taylor and Sonia Smith and Nalani now, like they're the ones that are saying, hey, this is how we do stuff every single time. Because how you do anything is how you're going to do everything. I don't want to single out one freshman because obviously you've got a, a bunch of freshmen came in, but the, again, scr- inner squad scrimmage that I, that I saw, I love Candy Harris's oh, game. She is tremendous freshman guard for you guys. Talk to me about her a little bit. She is, she is quick. Yeah, she is um, what Virginia play of the year. She won a state championship with her team. Um, high profile um, AAU program, the Fairfax Stars right here. So we got one that's, you know, from the area, so to speak, um, was recruited by almost every Power Five, but, you know, she chose family. You know, we always say, hey, why go to a Power Five when you can go to a Power Family? And that's who we pride ourselves being. Um, but she's exciting. Like today after um, just film, we watch film, you know, you get, on, you get on them hard, and she comes out, she's like, Coach, I'm going to be the best point guard that you ever coached. Now I just ripped her in the locker room, <laughs> right. you know, because you don't have to get better, point out your, you know, De, you know deficiencies, but she said, "Coach, I'm going to be the best point guard you ever coach." That's saying a lot because Coach Frank was my point guard, right. and she said, "Okay, you got to be better than me." Then <laughs> that's a, that's a pretty good challenge. All right, you have your uh, opener coming up next Monday. Uh, Bowie State is coming into town. We get to the first media timeout, or we get to the end of the first quarter. What will your team have done at that point for you to say? We're on the right track here. Well, we're definitely going to be scoring the ball. Like, that's okay. something that we have to do. And, and our, our trajectory with this season is to be able to score within the first six to eight seconds. So we're looking to push and transition like crazy. We address not only scoring, but we address depth. And so we have the players that can play at that frenetic pace. Um, we want to definitely see that, and we want to be able to win the rebound be on the boards and be plus 12 at the end of every game. Is that pace something that the players have taken to and they enjoy that? Well, I would imagine most players do want to just get up and down and flow on offense. Yeah, well, the players we recruit and you go watch AAU anytime, that's all they're doing. They're getting up and down. Very few players want to sit and run the picket fence. You know, they want to get up down. Um, You're going to have high scoring games that way because you increase the possession. So we want to be able to do that. Coach, thanks for coming by. Again, season opener Monday, Eagle Bank Arena, Bowie State. We're looking for a lot of points. Yes. Hopefully a lot of wins as well. Again, fans come out Monday, November 6th. See the women take on Bowie State at Eagle Bank Arena. Thanks to Coach Blair Lewis for joining us. Coming up next, we'll be joined once again by the head coach of the men's team, Tony Skin. We'll look ahead to Monmouth coming up on Monday.
Welcome back to the George Mason Basketball Coaches Show. Head coach of the men's team, Tony Skin, joining me here. We're going to talk about the season opener coming up on Monday against Monmouth. Coach, I just asked the women's coach, Vanessa Blair Lutz, this question. I'm going to ask you. You get to that first media timeout, maybe the 10-minute mark of the first half of the game against Monmouth. What will you need to have seen from your team to really think, okay, we're on track, we're on pace, these guys are locked in, we're doing what we need to do? I think, you know, for us, especially with our length, our athleticism, we, we live and die by deflections. Um, the goal is to have 38 deflections per game. So after that media timeout, you know, as long as we're in a, in a good spot deflection-wise, it kind of lets me know and gives me an indication that, you know, these guys are playing, they're playing hard and they're ready. All right, let's talk a little bit about Monmouth. And you and I were talking before, neither one of us know too much about them. They've had a lot of influx of new players, as most programs have. Um, King Rice, their head coach, for those of you that are a little bit older, will remember him playing at North Carolina back in the 90s. His son played four years at Bucknell, has now come yeah, yeah. back to play for his dad there at Monmouth. A lot of good guards on that team. A lot of guys that can score the basketball. Should be a pretty good challenge for you guys. It's, it's, it's you know, it's, it's going to be a good game for sure. You know, he's had history of playing fast and shooting a lot of threes. And obviously with the addition of his son, who's a really, really good player, uh, uh, all league type guy um, at Bucknell, I expect them to come in and do the same thing. All right. We are taping this the day before Halloween. So I got to ask, kids are coming out, knocking on the skin family house for yeah. trick or treating. Are you full-size candy bars? Are you fun-size candy bars? Who's in charge of this? What are you giving out? Should we just skip your house altogether? What are no, we doing we can't, here? We, we, can't, we can't skip my house because my daughter's been waiting, you know, 365 days for this <laughs> night. Um, so I would probably say fun-size fun size right, candy there you bars. Go. What, what, what's the daughter? Does she? I'm assuming she's, she's already got her costume picked out. It'd be a little late in the game if she didn't. She's a big Reese's Pieces candy. Okay. So... Um, yeah. Has she figured out, is she going to go out and knock on, are you going to take her out or are you going to be the guy throwing the candy in the bucket? So apparently my whole neighborhood's waiting to knock on my door as well. <laughs> so I'll be at I the front, I'll be at the front door giving out candy. Right, that's, a be that's a better <laughs> job than walking around anyway. So, um, you've played for, uh, and also coached with a lot of really good coaches in this game from, you know, coach Larinaga, when you were here playing, he was your head coach, you, play, you were assistant with Eric Conkle. Kevin Willard over at Maryland, a lot of different guys, a lot of different philosophies. Did you get any advice from any of them when you first got this job that they say, hey, Tony, you were a great assistant. Hey, Tony, you were a great player. But now that you're the head coach, man, this is something that you're not going to be ready for, but we're trying to warn you this is coming. Yeah, I think that the common denominator of when I did get the job, you know, from Chris Holtman, Eric Conkle to Kevin Willard to Coach L, um, the common denominator was just to kind of live in it. Um, it's, it's, it's a completely different thing when you're an assistant, when you don't have to deal with different intricacies. Um, but once you take that first seat, you know, there's no, there's really no off days as an assistant, let alone as a head coach. Um, but just to live in it is kind of the common denominator of the conversations that I've had, um, both when I took the job, but, you know, continuously as I've been in contact with those guys. The last time you actually played in a game, not exhibition, but an actual game at Eagle Bank Arena was your senior night. Back in 2006, you guys rolled James Madison, I think, by close to 30 points. It was an absolute yeah. blowout. Yeah, we did that what do you remember from that game? What do you remember from your last time playing at Eagle Bank Arena? Yeah, it was, it was a special moment. You know, I still have visions of it, you know, uh, between the student section, between the fans. Um, it, was, it was a surreal moment for myself and my teammates and really kind of the same vision that I'm, I'm expecting and hoping for uh, with this new regime and for our, uh, our current team. Have you thought about what it's going to be like to walk out there for the first time? I mean, you, you had kind of the trial run yeah. with the exhibition game, but have you in your mind envisioned what it's going to be like? You walk out, Doc Nix, who was not here when you played here. Doc Nix came the following year, yeah. so you didn't have the, the band as jazzed up as it is now with Doc Nix. Have you thought about what that moment is going to be like when you walk out of the tunnel for the first time as the head coach? Yeah, I've thought about it, but to be honest with you, you know, it's, it's really about my guys and what they see and how they feel. Um, this is, it's going to be, a, I think, a very, very exciting year. Um, I think everybody's excited to see what we can do and just looking forward to just giving that atmosphere, hopefully, for our guys. You've talked about the, the depth of this team, the length of this team. 
how much fun is it at times to sit and practice and watch guys go head to head? And you're like, man, this is a lot of fun to watch because I can play either one of these guys. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we knew that going into uh, the portal. Um, the staff did a tremendous job in just getting different guys, um, like size guys, which obviously makes it a little bit easier defensively to be able to do some different things. Um, but like I said, you know, not a lot of coaches in the country have the opportunity to really go in the portal and get, you know, eight, nine really, really good pieces. I um, mean, I think we have that. And I'm just excited to just kind of, kind of see how that unfolds. We talked to women's head coach Vanessa Blair Lewis about her freshman point guard, how excited she is to have her. You got to be excited about that freshman point guard you got on your team as well. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. You know, I keep telling the story of how we, we got him committed in May. Obviously, no one knew that. Um, but for two and a half months, you know, he made a sweat with staying on, on, on the circuit, playing with his AAU team. Um, he also missed the eight weeks in the summer. And so we were a little ner nervous to see how he would transition because most freshmen do hit that wall. Um, but he's been remarkable. He's coachable. You know, he plays hard. He's got leadership abilities. And I'm just excited to see, you know, his growth. Is there one guy that surprised you more than any other? Would he be the guy as far as from practice day one to now getting ready for no, I mean, we, game we've got one? we've got, you know, different guys that have just stepped up. And I think even this this past week weekend, we saw Malik step up. You know, Malik's been playing behind an all league guy. And so uh, having an opportunity now to step into that role, he's, he's shown, you know, some good life. You got the season opener coming up on Monday. Obviously, Monmouth is the opponent. You want the students all out there, the local fans all out there. You'd like to get that place packed like when you played the last time against James Madison. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the atmosphere is everything. You know, those guys, as much as, you know, they want to play hard, they play even harder when they see fans and just the overall excitement in the stands. So definitely looking forward to um, the support that, you know, we'll have all year long, starting with Monmouth on uh, November the 6th. Yeah, we saw that. I think, again, your guys feeding off that in the exhibition game, a couple of guys talking about it post game that they, they really like the student support, and hopefully we'll get everybody to come out for that. So that's going to do it for this episode of the George Mason Basketball Coaches Show. Thanks again, both Coach Tony Skin, also Vanessa Blair-Lewis of the women's team. Come out to see both of them November 6th, the season opener at Eagle Bank Arena. Thanks once again as well to Capital Alehouse for sponsoring the show. I'm Bill Roland. We will see you at the games.